I've always taken an interest in history, and my only favorite TV show is Who Do You Think You Are, where people trace their family lineage. Some episodes have seen people trace their forefathers all the way to 1066, a thousand years. When I was young, I researched history so much. I knew so much of the kings and queens from the current Queen Elizabeth to the first Queen Elizabeth, and before that to the War of Roses. I wanted to know my place in history, in the British Empire of colonized India. Of course, in primary school, we had learned about Queen Victoria wearing black after Prince Albert died. We had learned about the Spanish Armada and Queen Elizabeth I. We learned about Henry's wives. Divorced, divorced beheaded, beheaded died, divorced, divorced beheaded, beheaded survived. survived. So when my dad was going to Pakistan, I thought, this is my chance. I said to him, we only know the names of the family tree going up to your great-grandfather. Could you find out some more names? I waited patiently. I waited some more. And waited some more. And then he called. Dad said, I checked the registry office, and there is a record of my father, but my grandfather's record is not there. I asked, why? He said in a very matter-of-fact way, because the British burnt them, of course, as punishment for Indians asking for independence from British rule. This was crushing. So while British history could be traced all the way back to 1066, I couldn't get to 1866. I knew so much of British history, but I didn't know my own, whether it was Asian or Muslim history. I realized I knew nothing. Those kings and queens I had learned so much about had been the ones who torched my heritage and why colored people couldn't trace their lineage as effectively as white people. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. As the fire that had burnt the records of my forefathers burnt in my mind, I began to realize British history is my history. This is my country. But the history of my heritage is something else. I set out to learn my Muslim identity and history. I learned the differences between a Tughluq, a Mamluk, a Seljuk. I laughed at what is a Tughluq. I learned a golden hoard is not a treasure find. And of course, I knew that this is not an Ottoman, only because I thought it was a stool. And then I overcame that anger. I learned that the kings and queens of England had actual links to Islamic history. The line of divide in my mind reconciled with me knowing it's not them versus us. It's all of us. My Muslim identity was wider than just Indian history. I was so excited when I learnt about the Muslim Indian slave who Queen Victoria nicknamed Munshi, who had become friends with Queen Victoria, and that she sees no reason why he couldn't be the King of England and how Queen Elizabeth I would have lost the Spanish Armada until a Muslim king helped her. After that event, Queen Elizabeth I saw Muslims as close to her. We focus so much on the negatives today, but I learnt the backdrop of peaceful relations between Islam and the West, built at an unexpected time by people in extraordinary places. And so I started putting together 30 key events from Islamic history, which everyone should know. The days which were the same 24 hours as any day, but they shaped the Muslim world today. I then started writing this down so that I could preserve it by teaching it to my children. So while it's important to know of Oliver Cromwell and the English Civil War, or the American Civil War and Abraham Lincoln, we must also know of the Islamic Civil War and how it causes conflict in the Muslim world even today. And how while the current Muslim world focuses on internal conflict, there was a time when Muslim empires stretched so far into Europe, they controlled parts of France, and that was as early as the 700s. Around the same time in the 700s, there may have been an English king who was Muslim. And also from the same period of time, the 700s, we find cave drawings in Nevada and California, which suggest that Muslims had reached Nevada and California and most of North America some 700 years before Christopher Columbus. In California and Nevada, they even founded a school and were teaching. But more interestingly, outside of the Western perspective, how in Africa, a man, a Muslim man, kicked out of the city for his beliefs, came back 20 years later, not just to take the city, 
but to found one of the greatest empires Africa has ever seen. They liberated women, and they rose Africa to a status which we would envy today. Or how a man met another man on Hajj, and how that one meeting changed the face of the Arabian Peninsula for the next 300 years. Or even how Muslims pulled ships over land, over hills, to get behind naval defences and, 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 and win cities. But anyway, wouldn't you like to read about the 30 days which changed the Muslim world forever? This is what I've been writing to secure this history for future generations. You can pre-order the book today.